thank you for coming. Um, today we will have, well, for these sessions we will have four presentations. Every presentation, uh, it's 25 minutes of presentations and then five minutes for questions. So please keep with your question for the end. Um, I am very happy um, to introduce you the first presenter, who is Misumi Sadler from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Co-constructing, well, she will present her, um, her presentation is about co-constructing intercultural views and identities in a teaching methods class. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be here uh, after I graduated uh, from UOA in a, a PhD, with a PhD in East Asian Studies 10 years ago, and I came back. Uh, actually, two years ago I was here too. Uh, this is the second time I, would, I, I got to uh, talk about my project. Okay. Considering classroom as a third space, this study explores the beliefs and the perceptions of newly appointed graduate student teachers about academic language teaching and the effect of some factors such as intercultural competence and the learning experience on their perceptions and the teaching practice. The term third space was originally coined by Home K. Baha, 1994. The notion of third space challenges the judgmental and polarized views of us versus them. According to Benzi, quote, rather than stereotyping and making assumptions about how the other should act, the third space allows each to search for an understanding of the world of the other, unquote. According to Whedon, third space uh, is not a unitary, stable, permanent, and homogeneous place, but a place that is, quote, multiple, always subject to change and to the tensions and even conflicts that come from being in between, unquote, end quote. The benefits and the value of the third space uh, concept have been presented in a number of studies uh, on computer-mediated intercultural uh, communication and foreign language education, and some other studies too. In line with uh, these prior studies, this study is also framed by the concept of a classroom as a third space, specifically teaching method class as a third space where newly appointed graduate student teachers or GSTs share their perceptions of educational issues, uh, co-construct more global views, and shape new identities for themselves through interacting with each other. This third space concept is also a place, uh, sorry, rather, this third space is also a place where the GSTs can engage in reflection of what they believe about academic language teaching and how their beliefs or perceptions uh, affect their teaching practices. Okay. Uh, the study was conducted during the fall of 2012. A teaching method class, East Asian Language Pedagogy, this is a, a, a graduate seminar, is a required course for all GSTs new to uh, the Chinese, Japanese, and Korean language programs in our department. The class met once a week for two and a half hours, for 15 weeks in total. The participants were nine newly appointed GSTs. They were all non-US citizens and non-native speakers of English. They were in the same age, age group of between 22 and 30 two males and seven females. Except for one GSD who taught Japanese, all the other taught the Chinese class. Their majors varied ranging from linguistics to teaching ESL, classical Chinese literature, and to music education. 
although almost all of them had some kind of experiences tutoring English in their home country. Um, for most of them, except for two, uh, this was the first time they taught their first language to university level students in the US. Uh, in addition, this was also the first time for three particular GSTs to start a new life overseas. The main sources of data for this study were a beginning questionnaire uh, for on the first day of the class, and a weekly post on the discussion forum, three reflexive blogs or journals, and the results of the intercultural development inventory to assess uh, each GST's intercultural competence. And then we also use uh, some supplementary data such as lesson plans, uh, class observation reports. The intercultural development inventory, or the IDI, is a 50-item questionnaire that can be taken either in paper and pencil form or online, and generate an in-depth graphic profile of an individual's or group's overall positions on the intercultural development continuum. The intercultural development continuum consists of five core orientations from the uh, more monocultural orientations of denial and polarization from the left to right, um, and through a more transitional orientation of minimization and to the more intercultural or global orientations of acceptance and adaptation. According to the group profile report, the group rated its own intercultural ability within the acceptance range. However, what the group perceives is different from where the group actually is in terms of its developmental orientation. The group's primary orientation or developmental orientation is found to be within the, minima uh, within the minimization state. Uh, by the way, this, um, you can compare this with uh, my students in the first year Japanese. Two years ago, I uh, asked the students to take the same test. And as a pretest score, is, this score is a little bit lower than uh, my first year students. So that tells you something. <laughs> There's some implications here. OK. So. Out of nine GSTs, six were tested in the minimization stage. So this is the orientation that highlights cultural commonalities and universal values, but may lack a deeper recognition and appreciation of cultural difference. Two were uh, tested at the polarization stage, having a judgmental perspective in terms of us versus them, and it can be either defense or reversal. And defense is more like overly critical view toward the other culture. Reversal is the opposite, overly critical view towards one's own culture. And then we had one denial. Um, this is the orientation view that uh, their own culture as a as being the only real one and having a limited knowledge of other cultures, exhibiting disinterest in cultural diversity and or avoiding interacting with the cultural difference. There were no GSD uh, who was tested in the acceptance or adaptation stage. The examination of the GSD's online post journals and other materials suggest that their intercultural competence coupled with their own learning experience have an impact on their perceptions about academic language teaching as well as their teaching practice. One particular theme that emerged from the data was that more monocultural views appeared when the 
uh, when they encountered something uncertain or unfamiliar or some, so, some sort of unresolved issues, such as use of technology, homework correction, <laughs> target language only policy in the classroom, and classroom management. There were clear signs of denial views and also judgmental views such as we Chinese versus Americans, we Asians versus the rest of the world. And the funny thing was we older folk, but they are not old, <laughs> we are older folk versus younger generation. <laughs> GSTs uh, struggled at the particular time and around the particular situations and shared their frustrations and fears on their online posts and journals. At the same time, however, these struggles and frustrations eventually helped them open new alternatives and generate new knowledge and understanding in a third space. So even though all GSTs were from East Asia and had similar educational backgrounds and uh, learning experiences, each GSD had unique views on some educational and cultural issues. And their development of more intercultural, more global views uh, on some educational cultural issues um, and then on academic uh, language teaching are different from each other. So for this particular presentation, I would like to focus on one participant, uh, one GSD to illustrate her beliefs and perceptions about teaching, and then how some factors such as her intercultural competence and the learning experience influenced her teaching practice. Okay, Shin. Okay, uh, Shin, uh, by the way, all the names I use here is uh, pseudonyms. Uh, Shin, was a first name MA student, a first year MA student uh, of Chinese linguistics. She was born and raised in China and had taught Chinese at a university in the US a year before she uh, started her graduate work at Illinois. Her IDI results indicated that she rated her capability of understanding cultural difference uh, within acceptance, but her actual, like a primary developmental uh, orientation was within denial. So you see the huge difference between her perception versus actual developmental orientation. So she substantially overestimated her capability of understanding cultural differences. Uh, from the data, we learned that Shin was trained under an audio lingo method and taught a relatively small class uh, with no more than 10 students. Um, so what she did in her class was more teacher-centered, you know, teacher ask questions, students answer, you know, response stim stimulus and response type, and drill-based, and there was no group or pair work. Uh, she used the teaching strategies that had worked well for her in the past, but she soon realized that um, while many of the strategies would work well with students from her own cultural background, uh, they might not be as effective with students whose learning approach is culturally different. And then, of course, different school and different language program has a different uh, emphasis on such too, so that's something she has realized. She had believed that the use of technology was a waste of time, and also <laughs> the use of visual aids would distract students processing information. In this excerpt here, uh, this is her uh, online post, a part of her online post, you can see how she perceived the use of technology in foreign language education. So basically said, uh, technology takes time, showing something on PPT takes one second for changing one slide, recording what you plan to teach by this slide takes another two seconds and explain 
explaining briefly what this slide is being about takes at least five more seconds. And so, on. so if the teacher prepares 20 slides for a class, three minutes or so will be spent on introducing technological information. You know, that kind of stuff. So it may be work, it may be helpful for the students, but it's for, from her point of view, still takes time for students to process the information. Okay. After this paragraph, however, she started to talk about her changing attitude toward the technology. Please note that this was around the fifth week into the semester, and the first time she started to show signs of opening her mind. As I have been introduced more teaching approaches and methods in pedagogy, my mind is becoming opener than before to view technology issue. It is not necessarily a waste of time if the instructor is fully aware of what she is doing and doing it effectively enough. Nowadays, I feel more obliged to accept technology, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, after five years learning from and practicing audio lingo school, I am proud to say that I am changing to adapt and to survive. <laughs> yes, um, her fellow classmates Although most of them were, actually, she was pretty much the only person who was kind of resistant to a technology and the visual aids. Um, but most, most of her classmates were pro-technology and pro-visual aids. Uh, but they shared similar feelings about the change in their attitudes to adapt and to survive. Uh, for example, Dan said this, I, I agree with what you say about the change. You know, I myself am very used to the old school teaching methodology and such. But here you can see, in a large sense, we should always be open to change, willing to try and adapt and find what works best for us. So this is a student, he was uh, tested at the uh, minimization stage. So you see that little bit difference, he's much more kind of open. But that doesn't mean, uh, well, I, I'm not gonna talk about it, but uh, uh, he was a more like kind of minimization um, perspective here. Okay, in response to this, Shin said, thank you, Dan, you know, for your comments and agreement. I used to believe that there always exists one approach working better than all the others for the interest of the final product of a language class. Forgive, my, forgive me my tenacity, please, because I still believe so. The reason I'm changing strategy in our Chinese class is that what I have been doing does not serve well our current textbook. So you can see she's realizing, you know, it's not working. For some reasons, it's not working. Even though I only have nine students, which is a very small class for, you know, uh, language class nowadays. But, um, but she's realizing that too. So, at, but at this point, she was still showing somewhat denial perspective viewing her, her approach, in this case, the audio lingo method, as the only real one. But she was no longer avoiding different pedagogical approaches and methods. We were able to capture some other moments when she was gradually opening up her mind. For example, toward the end of the semester, uh, she talked about what she and her fellow GST, Kim, did. Kim was preparing to apply for a teaching position and uh, making a teaching demo video for part of her application. They decided that it would be best if Kim taught Shin's class first as a kind of practice before Kim taught her own class. Okay, and so here's what Shin wrote about her observing Kim teach her class. So the most impressive part to me was the group activity. I didn't usually engage students in free conversation in pairs. However, Kim was pretty familiar with this approach and the outcome was surprisingly good. Students come up with a variety of marvelous expressions, simply combining the couple of grammar patterns we have learned. Some of their expression conveyed a complicated meaning they were more creative than me. 
So this was the first time she mentioned about anything to do with more learner-centered activities. Of course, this does not mean that uh, she suddenly started to incorporate group or pair work in her lesson plans, but it still helped her realize that um, her way of teaching is not the only way that works, and also helped her see the world through a different lens, specifically uh, from the student's perspectives. Her changing attitude was also observed in her final project. Um, she chose to write an annotated bibliography on the paper that challenges audio lingers and proposes how to incorporate context into a drill-based class. Xin wrote at the end of her project, as you can see, you know, we should always bear with the awareness of these unsolved problems and contribute our interacts to conquer you know. Okay. So in conclusion, uh, considering a teaching method class as a third space, this study ex explored newly appointed GSD's perceptions about academic language teaching and learning. Uh, the results demonstrated how interaction and self-reflection -re uh, in a third space can deepen learning. In the third space, the GSD's uh, claimed common ground and shared intimate information and mutual understandings on topics regarding pedagogical and cross-cultural issues and practices. The results also revealed how a teaching method class can become more effective and more supportive of prospective teachers in developing beliefs about teaching academic language and you know, practices. The importance of building a community is, without doubt, a keynote that should be addressed here. The community provides a space where participants can work together on educational and intercultural issues that they perceive as critical importance in both their personal and public lives by supporting each other and sharing ideas and experiences. In the current study, this sense of community transpired in the third space. So it is our belief that integrating the third space concept into the teaching method course provided an important space to our nine GSTs uh, and served as the first step to getting them to reflect on their own beliefs and uh, teaching practices and interact with their fellow GST to become pur more purposeful decision makers in the age of globalization. Thank you very much. I didn't have time to talk about this, but it's, this is about the future. So. We have five minutes for questions. Okay. No, um, I, I did, but only like half of them was able to, so I, I didn't really enforce it because I, I used the IDI for a kind of diagnostic purpose, um, but I should have done that, but it, it would be my next project, definitely, <laughs> because I didn't really reinforce the students to do it, and half of them did. And then some of them, of course, got better, some of them, <laughs> uh, no change. Most of them are no change, actually. So, yeah, that would be a good one to see development of intercultural competence. I really appreciate how you were able to bring in Mm -hmm. um, one question I have is, did you do any analysis of the um, background, the teacher's background, relationship between their background, how they were trained, and their score on the idea? 
that, yeah, partially I did for this particular uh, participant, yes. And then others, yes, I did, uh, I, I have kind of basic, kind of more like casual observation at this point, I should do more careful <coughs> analysis on that. But we had some students who are uh, in an MA in teaching ESL. Those are the students, all of them are from mainland China. They are much more, um, how do you say, kind of acceptable, uh, ac acceptable, accept, <laughs> accepting to the idea of like a uh, inexplicit teaching of grammar, uh, active learning, you know, and stuff. But students from uh, East Asia, <laughs> Uh, East Asian studies in our department. They are more like a kind of teacher center. The teacher have to control everything. Teacher have to lecture everything. Kind of, you know, we had that keynote. Uh, more like a kind of tra traditional views of language teaching. But yeah, I I should really look into more <laughs> carefully. Right now, it's kind of casual observations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.